So um, GDC 2024 is proceeding apace as we uh, as we record this. There's been plenty of uh, great announcements and something which caught right. our eye, which is looking highly promising, I think, is an update from AMD on Fidelity FX Super Resolution. 3.1 was announced at GDC. And um, well, Alex, this looks like a particularly uh, promising upgrade, I'd say, because I think, you know, over the last year, it seems evident that the R&D effort has been focused on frame generation. Not much has happened in terms of the spatial upscaling element of, of FSR, and it's kind of lagging behind its competitors now quite drastically, I would say. Um, this announcement, well, there's a lot of announcements here, but I guess the sort of uh, tentpole uh, announcement is that it does look as though spatial upscaling is receiving the attention it, it kind of needs, right? Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they specifically demoed, well, demoed, it's like vin, like little snippet vignettes, yeah. mm -hmm. screenshots like that are this big of uh, Ratchet and Clank getting an update to support FSR 3.1. And it, they showed 1080p in, I believe, performance mode. If really? I'm not mistaken, I think that's what it was. So you're um, impressive then, I'd argue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah mainly... You're right. It is. It is 1080p performance mode, which is kind of what I would suggest is a worst case scenario uh, for realistic use cases for FSR. I'd agree with that. So uh, there's a lot of issues with FSR, but one thing that happens uh, specifically as you go lower internal resolution is that basic things that can just move uh, they they start getting that extreme fuzzy look all around them. Uh, I showed it off really well, actually, in, uh, I was about to say ski, a Sea of Thieves, Skull and Bones, uh, and Skull and Bones, like, play that game on console, turn on FSR 2, well, it's already on, uh, have FSR 2 there, and you just watch any character move, and they just turn into this, like, garbly mess uh, there. The resolution is slow internally, and then the way FSR 2 does its resolve, they just turn into these pixel things, these pixel monsters, as soon as they start moving. <laughs> um, and here, this is looks like what it's aiming to fix based upon uh, what we're seeing here. They're showing this like spinning apparatus in the first yep. level. It's a classic there. example. It's similar to Immortals of Avium, the, the kind of view weapon <laughs> viewpoint. It's exactly <laughs> the same artifact there. Yeah, it could. So there's a lot of reasons why that could be the case um, here. Like the view weapon thing in Immortals, I think is pro one of the obvious things there is it's something that lacks a motion vector for some reason, uh, like motion, like competent motion vectors. Mm. So you see the really big differences between things like XESS, DLSS, and FSR2 there uh, in that scene because the way there's more graceful handling of things without motion vectors in the machine learning models versus what FSR2 tends to do, which is just like a a lot of ghosts uh and usually uh so in this case it looks like they're handling that differently it might be something that has to do with motion vectors differently uh uh, uh they also showed off like a, a little shot sorry oliver these are just like gi gifs gifs Yes. I think the thing that amuses me here is that they've got little magnifying glasses on the on the on the images, which make you think, "Oh, I'll press that and I'll get a bigger image." And you don't. It, it, it's just exactly the same. It's just like this little tiny, maybe twenty five hertz GIF. Uh, like not exactly the greatest. I wouldn't show a game like this, but this whatever. Um, sorry, Oliver, you're having to suffer through trying to maybe put this on screen. But they also show like a background shot of the crowds, and there's uh, in the the background shot of the crowd between the different versions you can see there's stability issues in the older version and there's a much more locked in look yeah. uh, with like less frame like viewport shutter the one thing i'm obviously going to be really curious on is whether or not this fixes disocclusion fizzle which is probably fsr2's biggest issue overall next to ghosting of particles like usually when most people think think of fsr2 they think about that fuzz around the characters that i just talked about earlier but when anything moves out of the way, you see like a, a superimposed previous frame behind them of where they were for a couple of frames that is hyper sharpened and has like blown out pixel size. And I called that uh, this occlusion fizzle because then it resolves over time. But the way it, you perceive it over that time is that it goes like that. Uh, and uh, exactly like that. It sounds like that too. And this is one thing I would love to test when it comes out. Um, 
One other thing I really want to say before we continue on here is that the FSR 3.1 is the new naming. It's the they've updated this spatial temporal upscaler for that, but also frame gen is going to be getting an update, and the update seems to be focusing on making it upscaler or resolve agnostic. So FSR to date in official implementations has always been married with the FSR 2 um anti-aliasing and upscaler so you would yeah. always have to use fsr2 you play avatar you play any game you have to use fsr2 to use frame gen from fsr and this will not be the case as of whatever this release is when it happens and it'll probably coincide with a patch from nixies for ratchet and clank that seems to be the hint from the uh materials from amd right yeah mm-hmm. yeah interesting yeah so that's actually quite an interesting point you raised there about being agnostic in terms of the inputs because the hack, the mod that you covered actually is the same, right? You can yeah. use FSR for the ups, um, frame gen with DLSS inputs, which is kind of what you'd want possibly for, you know, for RTX 2000, 3000 cards. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think that was back then just like a slight conceit when they released it probably due to time and or they don't have to do any benefits for people who use intel or people who use uh, rtx gpus but this is a nice thing to benefit them as well Mm -hmm. Uh, john they're talking here in their uh, disclosure that it's coming to the microsoft xdk so it's going to be available for uh, consoles good or bad thing frame generation yeah uh potentially good but only if used very carefully yeah. specifically i think <laughs> they need this is something that needs to be implemented in a game that's that's designed for 60 frames per second minimum uh and yep. they want to get it up to 120 which i think is a very good use case scenario uh that a lot of that depends on the overhead of the frame generation itself on the console like if they're already going for that 16 millisecond frame times is fsr3 actually going to be able to run without sacrificing that uh they also there's also still the issues i i I don't know have you guys tested this recently i've always had issues with the fsr3 when doing uh v-sync plus vrr producing very wobbly looking results a lot of Mm. judder uh dlss3 does not have this issue but fsr3 absolutely does every time i've tested it and i feel like like on xbox if you're not completely locking the frame rate down to to 120 with frame gen you're just going to end up with kind of juddery results so the problem i have here is that i don't have a lot of faith in developers implementing this well based on what's happened with fsr2 yeah that's really reasonable right like fsr2 is a good technology when used responsibly but a lot of games do not use it responsibly and the result is extremely poor image quality uh, i think image quality in general has degraded in many ways from last generation I agree uh, with you with the, that. they are they are abusing this, this reconstruction and i love reconstruction but it needs to be used correctly and it's not being used well yeah uh, by and large Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that, you know, even in this disclosure, AMD is making some pretty strong recommendations for how FSR 3 should be used. And in bold, they say it's highly recommended to be always running at a minimum of circa 60 FPS before frame generation is applied for an optimal high quality gaming experience. Right. And I think that's been borne out in basically all of the testing we've done with FSR 3. and you know, developers in, in console land kind of need to listen to that. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that also I think is very important is there's currently no latency mitigation strategy oh, uh, right. tied into FSR 3 since anti Leg Plus is uh, currently no-show and maybe being retooled. Um, so on console too, another thing <laughs> that alongside that, they would a developer would have to figure out their own way to do latency mitigation on top of FSR 3 because I don't think just doing the like I don't know they could just straight up v-sync it to 120 uh, but at that point like they could implement their own reflex and do like 116 FPS or something like that I I don't really know but developers if they're going to use this on console they really I really think they need to think about it Uh, I don't know how they solve it necessarily yeah I think optional 120 hertz modes are the best use case scenario for it right I think that's the the bottom line and it probably would be best to be used with VRR Um, I mean if it's 
kind of makes sense, right? What, one thing I, I thought about, um, you guys did that uh, recent direct on the PS5 Professional, and yeah. with it has a decent amount of machine learning capabilities uh, based on what we what we know. I'd be curious to see if Sony would attempt its own sort of frame generation technology, oh. right? Yeah. Because yeah. that could potentially help mitigate some of the CPU <laughs> limitations uh, that we suspect is are the case here. So yeah. Um, I, I agree know, with that sentiment, the, right? Yeah. Cause it has the, it has the GPU grunt in the, the machine learning capabilities to potentially leverage frame generation very effectively. So you're still looking at high base frame rates that are required. Uh, yeah. To, you to still gotta, you still gotta be hitting 60, basically yeah. at least around 60. No amount uh, of Cerny magic is, is, is no, gonna, you know, overcome these fundamental issues that we're aware of, of course. I mean, yeah. Nvidia is on top with the frame generation right now, but even there, like if your base frame rate is too low, it just no amount of uh, latency mitigation completely solves these issues. And it just ends up feeling bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. I would love to see that with PSSR. Yep. It, I would like to see it have a similar trajectory to DLSS where uh, Sony provides a ray reconstruction alternative at some point in the future. Because ray reconstruction, oh, yeah. don't forget, that runs on RTX 2000 as well, that's, too. That's a good point. Yeah. So like uh, these are all things that they can do over time if they want. Uh, and I see this is just like a fundamental beginning for them, much like how DLSS 2 was for NVIDIA or like a rebirth for NVIDIA there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really looking forward to see what Sony does.